Hey everyone, this is the Community Proud Podcast. Of course, you know me. I'm Dustin. Uh, thank you for tuning in to episode two with Chaney Zimmerman. We had a great conversation. We, of course, talked about his story and the work that he does with his photography and also his inspirations. If you haven't already, go check out Young and Humble Photography on Instagram at Y-N-G-H-N-B-L and go follow him on the personal page as well at Chaney Ross. Uh, And of course, go check out our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and go like us on Facebook at Community Proud Podcast and follow me and Abraham on Instagram at dallen2199 and at underscore abe.jacobs. And if you like the content, share it with your mom, share it with your dad, share it with anyone who has a phone. Because if you post about it, we'll give you a shout out. Our only marketing is what we put out on social media and you guys. So literally anything helps. And we appreciate anything that you guys do to help us grow. And without further ado, here is episode two with Chaney Zimmerman. Chaney Zimmerman, welcome to the show, man. Fuck, man. Thanks for having me. Man, give me one of those. Love that shit. Love that shit, man. Um, I, I, like, have to tell you, dude, I'm so stoked about this. Really? Yeah, I'm really excited for this. Dude, like, a lot. that's good, because it makes me more excited. Awesome. Um, so, how are you doing, man? Uh, I'm good. It's, it's hot as hell. Hot but, as hell. Um, I mean, I'm good. Yeah. That's good, man. So, we're going to start this thing off. Just tell us a little bit about your background, childhood, all the way up through high school, basically. Just like in general? Just in general. Cool. Um, Family too, whatever you want to throw in there as well. Yeah. So, um, I am born and raised in Hanford, California. Fancy. AKA Cowtown. Mm -hmm. AKA you drive in from Fresno and you smell shit the entire way. Yep. Love that. Um, I grew up in a relatively small house. I shared a room with my brother for um, almost all my life kiddos back there shout out super dapper um shout out i was homeschooled till fifth grade i was really weird um i did not have any hobbies i was just i was i i really was just weird that's like what i can say about it i was weird um and then you know i went to school king's christian in in sixth grade and i um like made a few friends um i was kind of sort of like the outcast I've always been that's that's one kind of important thing in my life is that I've always been like the youngest basically mm. in like almost everything that I do yeah and so especially in school I was two to even sometimes three years behind everybody in my class mm-hmm. you know everybody hit puberty before me um everybody got their driver's license before me I was I was just behind mm. and so um going to school was tough I didn't really fit in with like the guys at my school and so I ended up hanging out you know more with girls and um in uh in high school that definitely transitioned to some rumors that I was uh you know yeah. with it, with some of that you know um confirm that's not true this is gonna be great on put the that video. on the record <laughs> this is gonna be great on the video podcast bro. um yeah dude oh, so anyways um I was that was kind of a rumor going around I was like you know what uh it's I can't, I can't change it. If people want to say that, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's yeah. definitely one thing that I've always kind of like been able to preserve is just like, if people want to talk about me, they want to talk about me. I'm not going to let it affect me, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, I, I really think that's important to have. So anyways, um, moving on through high school, I took a journalism class with a teacher that I, um, fuck <laughs> like well, okay now I'm thinking about it I'm like who who can I talk shit about on here you know because oh, like, who's just, gonna see this whatever you want man fuck um so far no one's seeing it yet. no put no, up to this point no uh, episodes are aired so perfect do you cut these are you gonna like cut the video or anything like that we try not to okay cool yeah alright so um yeah high school I took a journalism class with uh some people a few people that, you know, I was not the most fond of, mm-hmm. um, but I got a real sense for um, symmetry, and um, I was in the design um, section of that, and so, you know, our journalism sec- uh, 
class like wasn't anything big. We were designing a 60 page yearbook. It was nothing special. Right. Um, but really designing those pages and bringing them all together, making sure all the lines were mm -hmm. um, straight, that you had leading lines and that you had an eye line just kind of gave me just kind of like a little taste for like almost graphic design or just like kind of being creative in general with mm -hmm. pictures and stuff like that. Um, and from then on, I, I uh, didn't really do anything else with that. I just kind of went through the motions of school. Um, high school, I, uh, my, my, or senior year of high school, I, I really settled into my friend group. Um, my best friend became Josh, Josh yeah. Robinson. Josh shout, Robinson. Shout out to Josh. Shout out. Um, Nico. You better listen. All, both of you better listen. Yeah, Go ahead. Fuckers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People that need to listen to this, um, my mom, uh, <laughs> Joshua Robinson, Nico Hudson, yeah. uh, Ryan Little, Ooh, Jenna one. Pritchard, good one. fucking all these boys out here. You guys better tap in. And one girl. Yeah, one girl. Yeah. Only one girl. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I kind of settled into my friend group, mm -hmm. kind of found uh, who out, kind of found out who my family was, and mm -hmm. um, I went off to college, and uh, I got dumped my senior year, mm -hmm. and I was like in shambles. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Um. On a more real note, that was like a like a you know kind of a tough time for me. I didn't really know. I had never really been in like a serious relationship before somebody that I really cared about, and um, now and then I came out of it. And um, I had two jobs lined up for the summer. Mm -hmm. And one day my my mom walked into me and she was like, "Hey, I just got this call from a friend, and she wants you to uh, or she wants to know if you want to go work in Alaska for three months." Immediate my response was yes. Yeah. No hesitation. Mm -hmm. Just let's go, dude. So we talked to my dad. He was cool with it. Um, we booked a flight that night, and two days later, I was in Kenai, Alaska. Whoa, man. Yeah, it was, That's uh, crazy. It was good shit. Um, it was definitely nerve-wracking, um, but that was kind of the start of me breaking out of this Hanford cycle of yeah. you grow up here, mm -hmm. you go to school here, mm -hmm. you get a job here, yeah. and you stay here. Mm -hmm. And that's it. There's nothing, like, less creative than yeah. life in Hanford, I mm -hmm. feel like. Um, and it definitely pushed me to be a sort of motivated person. Mm -hmm. um, I went up there. I had to buy all my own groceries. Mm -hmm. um, I had to budget my own money. I was working 12 to 14 hour days, six to seven days a week. So I was really getting my ass whooped. And it wasn't just like, you know, like I'm working at Starbucks or in and out or whatever. Yeah. Um, I was processing fish heads and it was fucking gross. It was so nasty. <laughs> so much blood. Like imagine walking through like, you know, like two inches of blood on the floor, like all the time. Uh, just, just. I couldn't imagine. No. Nope. Really, really. Oh, yeah. it, oh, God, it was, dude. it was tough. It was, it was definitely a learning curve trying to like get used <laughs> to it. Um, anyway, so that summer ended up being awesome. I met a lot of cool people. I had no idea who anybody was when I went up there. And so, um, all the people that I met were new and I made a really, um, it's a, good thing. a lot of good connections. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely good to branch out mm. and meet new people. Um, and so then I came back. Um, I started my first year at Fresno State. Bathroom. I skipped my first two years. Actually, no, 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 no. I came back and I started my first year at West Hills. Got it. College. Yeah. Yeah. So I was gone for three months mm. for the summer. Come back. Excuse me. Um, West Hills. Did a year. Went back that summer. This is where photography starts. Mm. Um, and I've always had an interest in pictures. Right. Um, like, even when I was younger, I would look through photo albums for absolutely no reason. Just mm. the stupidest pictures yeah. that my grandma would take. Just hundreds of pictures of literally nothing. Mm. And um, I would just love it. Any, so Any, like, gems in there? Like, oh, you know, that's actually, like, kind of good. Or dude, just, like, goofy family pictures. There is this picture. Um, definitely all family pictures. There's yeah. no hidden gems of, like, Fuck, I would like post that or like I want this yeah. published or something. Right. But um, there's a picture of me, um, of my papa in these awesome like 60s, 70s glasses that are like this big. Yeah. And uh, he's like kind of reclined in his in his recliner, and he has me just like on his chest right here. Golden. It's just this beautiful picture, man. I just that's like love it. that's like not like a um, a gem, as you say, like. Um, like, oh, man, that was a good quality photo, but right. like, that's, like, a personal gem, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, man, that's, like, right yeah. there, right? No, for real. Mm -hmm. that, like, literally something that you can connect with, like, mm -hmm. the rest of your life. So that's definitely um, uh, a, a hidden gem. 
And sure. There's another one with me on a fucking little tyke phone. Yeah. It looks like a meme, bro. I'm literally like, <laughs> literally, this is a screenshot of it right here. And just imagine like a plastic little tyke phone. Yeah. Like, awesome. <laughs> oh awesome. my god. So yeah, um, I've always kind of enjoyed pictures. I've never, I had never picked up a camera or anything like that besides mm-hmm. the one that my parents had like in the drawer. But that summer, a kid came up. His name is Elijah Hyatt. Yo, shout out Elijah Hyatt, E Hyatt Photo on Instagram. Go I don't check know who you are, out. but shout out. Yeah. Shouts to Elijah, a fantastic photographer, definitely a storytelling photographer. Um, guys all time, man. Can't say anything else. It's awesome. Sure. Anyway, so Elijah came up. He had a Canon uh, T5i, and uh, I believe at that point he had a 70 to 200, which is a really long lens. Mm-hmm. You put it on the camera, and it just looks like a fucking camera, dude. It's yeah. like, damn! You know? Yeah. yeah. So... Um, PP audio. <laughs> yeah, for real. Hello. <laughs> um, anyways, so, yeah, he had this, like, really cool camera. He shot on a 50 millimeter um, 1.8, which is just the classic first lens that you buy. I have it right up there. Um, it's, like, 50 bucks on Amazon. You just pop it on, boom, shoot. Nice. Um, and so I, I kind of, like, you know, um, saw him taking pictures a lot that summer. I saw, like, the after product where he would go into Lightroom, kind of adjust colors and all of that, and I was like, holy fuck, this is awesome. Yeah. And um, so I did my research, I came back, did another year of school, um, made a lot more friends that year, Mm -hmm. um, really settled into kind of a new friend group, because you know, you get out of high school, everybody goes their separate ways, and you got to kind of find new people that you're doing the same thing with constantly to Mm -hmm. um, grab onto, and I made a lot more friends that way. I started working at Starbucks. Actually, I came back to Starbucks, um, and uh, I loved working at Starbucks. So all that's happening. I save up money. I buy a Canon T5i. Oh, okay. Canon T5i with a battery grip and a 50 millimeter 1.8. Just, dude, such humble beginning. Humble beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I bought it. And I played around with it, you know, kind of shot, shot around. I really started with night photography. Um, I, I did a lot of, like, I would go out, like, one in the morning and go to an overpass. Mm-hmm. And I would open up for a long exposure and just let all these cars pass by. It actually was really cool. You could see, like, some stars and stuff. It was pretty cool. But, That's cool. Um, yeah, so I, I did that. And then I kind of gravitated more towards portrait photography. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of got into that. And I really started to spend a little bit more time and money on fashion at that time. Started, you know, kind of changing out the clothes that my mom bought for me for, yep. you know, some nice jeans, some t-shirts that I like, brands that I like. And I kind of like got more into um, portrait photography. So yeah, that's through second year. So then I went back to Alaska for a mm-hmm. third time. That time, I had my camera with me, and me and Elijah actually decided that we were going to drive to Alaska. So we left from Hanford, California. I went and picked Elijah up in Fresno, and then we headed up the highway, man. What? Yeah. How long was how long was the drive? Uh, so there it was eight days. Eight days. But we definitely took our time. Okay. Yeah. So on the way there, uh, we stopped in Oregon twice. Uh, we drove through Portland, and we kind of stopped there for a little bit. It was cool. Okay, so it was, like, more like sightseeing then. Like, yeah, def- I, I mean, that's, like, literally the whole reason that we wanted to go. Good. Because, dude, if you drive up this, like, the West Coast, there's yeah. so many places. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh-huh. And one of the biggest places that we stopped was in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Um, I went up to the Space Needle. That was super tight. Awesome. Walked around downtown a little bit. Awesome. We tried to go to um, Pike's Place, that really downtown place mm-hmm. where, like, the first Starbucks was. Okay. And it was just unbelievably packed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was so bad. So, anyway. For Starbucks, man, everybody's got to be... Of course, all, all the usuals is going to be packed, but then yeah. all the people that are trying to see their first Starbucks... For real. ...are yeah. going to be there, too. It's just like... It, it was it was like a madhouse, dude. It was it was crazy. Um, so, yeah, we... And then we got out of the U.S. Uh, we made it into uh, Canada. That was unbelievable, man. It was... I can't explain, like... Anybody that's from here has seen the hills over, you know, in... Or, you know, like, everybody's seen the Sierra Nevada as you go to China Peak or, like, whatever. Yep. Drive to the mountains. The mountains north are just on a completely different scale. Really? It's just, you're driving right next to them, and it's like, I cannot believe that's real. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So we drove through Canada. We stopped at a few places there. Um, then we made it to Alaska. I worked the whole summer. It was a horrible summer. Like, oh, the yeah. worst ever. Yeah, a lot of things went wrong. 
Um, and then we came back. That summer, I made an Instagram account mm -hmm. called CZ Picks. I remember CZ that. CZ P I X X. I thought it was the coolest shit ever. I was like, I'm gonna hang on to this forever. It's gonna be on a business card. Oh. And uh, yeah, so I posted a few pictures there over the summer. Kind of got my bearings in Lightroom. Started playing around uh, with this creative mode on my T5i, and uh, yeah, kind of started to build my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a couple of years, actually. So yeah, get back to my last thing in Alaska. That whole year, I started taking pictures for people, kind of like gain an audience I guess not really big at all but um just kind of you know getting my name out there uh, I think I got paid once or twice okay. maybe for pictures mm -hmm. um and then I decided not to go back to Alaska um the next summer um I think I'm trying to think of my timeline I'm pretty sure that's because I started dating a girl and I yeah and I decided I didn't want to go back to Alaska. Um, and so, and also I was just kind of burnt out on it. I didn't really want to anymore. Yeah. Um, and I, I really wanted to, because my birthday is in, in July. Mm -hmm. And every, you know, my 17th through 18th, or 17th through 19th birthday, I was mm -hmm. in Alaska. Right. Um, so, anyways, um, yeah, I stayed home. I shot more and more. Um, kind of learned more things, learned I didn't really like landscape, really started heavily um, honing in on portrait photography. And then um, after a while, I got kind of tired of my T5i. It's a mm -hmm. crop sensor lens, so it's, or it's a crop sensor camera, so it's a little bit smaller. Um, this is a full frame camera, this is a professional camera. And before this one, I had a Canon 5D Mark II. And when I bought that, I bought it to um, shoot a wedding in Oklahoma for one of my buddies, mm -hmm. Jeremy Hudson. Shout out. Shout out to Jeremy. Hope you're watching this one. Better watch it. Better watch it. Yeah, not I'm not I'm not saying I hope you watch it anymore. I'm no. just telling these fools. Better watch it. I don't even watch know Jeremy this like shit, that. Bro. I don't even know you know you like that, Jeremy, but you better watch it. You better watch this fucking shit, bro. No. Anyways. <laughs> so um, yeah, I uh, I bought that camera. I rented this lens, the twenty four to seventy. Um, and I drove with two other people in my Prius. Nice. Yeah. Mm. In my Prius to, uh, to Oklahoma, shot the wedding, came back, was like, the colors on that camera are so outdated. And I saved up and I bought this camera. And then I spent a little bit too much money and sold some stuff also. And then I bought this lens too. And now we're here. And now, in the process, I've become young and humble photography. Young and humble. That's Wait. awesome. All right. So we're going to transition from that. So now we're going to talk about more of, like, some things you might have learned. You know, before we get to that, let's talk about more of, like, the technical side. So okay. I'm going to sound super beginner, man. Yeah, no, for sure. But... Uh, who are some people that you have looked to for, besides obviously buddies that also do photography, but some, I guess, I guess you can say like professionals, like who yeah. have you, you know, who have you, I guess, taken after, I guess. Who's okay. your inspiration? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, dude, number one ins uh, inspiration, um, his name is Jake Tovar. Okay. Um, I actually just recently met him last week. That's it was awesome. a huge deal for me. That's awesome. Um, his name on Instagram is motivated, but it's shortened. Mm -hmm. It's M O T V D. Go check him out. You check will out. not be um, disappointed. Shout that is out. one person that I definitely, when I found him and I started following him, um, I told everybody that I came into contact to. Um, his mm -hmm. pictures just like awakened this creative monster mm -hmm. in me, and it was just always, yeah, that guy. That guy's awesome, and he's such a cool dude. I met him for the first time. Mm. Uh, like a like last week, and it was just this freak thing, and uh, yeah, it was it was really cool, dude. Um, awesome. Where'd you meet him, dude? Uh, Raising Cane's. They no. Go. Way. Yeah, man. So yeah. okay, I'll, I'll give you a quick little story. So I was okay. on vacation with my family, um, near Mammoth. I was coming back down early um, because I had to work, and uh, I hit him on my way back. I was like, hey, man, any chance you're in town? Because he's from Bakersfield. Okay. I was like, is there any way you're in town? I'm going to stop for Raising Cane's. He was like, dude, let's do it. We met up. He brought all of his photo books, like his personal copies. 
I got to look through all of them. Uh, he signed my copy of um, one of the photo books that I have of his, which is just anybody who knows me knows how much like that meant to me, and even uh-huh. just like meeting him meant to me. So, yeah. anyways, um, yeah. And then uh, I I also shot um, a concert um, for a band that he was touring with as their photographer, mm-hmm. um, and that's kind of how I got like really connected um with him i got connected to the band from him but like that kind of you know started everything mm-hmm. that night he actually like bought me a beer he was like dude you just turned 21 let me go buy you a beer he's oh, the coolest guy man yeah of so course. awesome um so yeah so jake tovar another really big one is jimmy chin mm-hmm. um you ever seen the movie free free solo a big rock climbing movie that just came out pretty recently okay i haven't seen it okay um so Alec Honnold is a really famous rock climber right now. Um, he free solos. That's mm-hmm. like his thing, which means you have no ropes, nothing. It's just you and the wall. And um, That's nuts. Yeah. It's fucking crazy, right? That's freaking... Some stupid shit. Yeah, um, it is. Watch the movie to kind of see. It's, honestly, even if you don't like rock climbing, it's, it's pretty awesome. You should watch it. But anyways, Jimmy Chin is the photographer is a photographer for National Geographic, and mm-hmm. he was one of the lead directors on that movie. Yeah. He's also a really big adventure photographer, which mm-hmm. is something that I'm super interested in. So portrait photography is like, you know, if I'm shooting on a 24 millimeter lens, that's a pretty wide frame. Mm-hmm. So I like if I'm sitting here, I would be able to see your knees all the way up to probably my hats. So like, it's a pretty wide frame, right? Wow, yeah. Um, when you use a wide frame, obviously you can catch more scenery. So in adventure photography, typically what pictures look like are really big landscapes, really beautiful landscapes, mm-hmm. very aesthetically pleasing, and then a very small subject, typically. Mm-hmm. That's what adventure photography is, and that's something that I really like. You accept a lot of light, a lot of colors come into play, clouds, sky, rocks, just everything outside. Mm-hmm. That's like, and that's like everything that like I love. You know, Yosemite mm-hmm. is just like my playground. So um, that's different from portrait photography. So that's definitely somebody that I look to for inspiration on, you know, like a, kind of a larger scale, I guess. Okay. Of course, Ansel Adams, just a okay. legend, mm-hmm. dude. Um, there, uh, there's this guy that I found by accident. I searched my name on Instagram, and his name came up. His name is Chris Cheney, and it's actually spelled with an E. He only shoots film, and he mainly shoots 120, which is a larger format Mm -hmm. um, than 35 millimeter. He's got, that that guy's awesome, Chris Chaney. Um, Sam Elkins is another big guy. Um, Yeah, those are definitely my my main inspirations. That sounds really good. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to transition more into, like, I guess helping other people out. This is where we bring value, right? Yeah. Um, so anyone who's, we see, we talked about it earlier, right? All these, you know, young people, high school. Yeah. They all want to be a photographer. Yeah. It doesn't always work out. Right. But how can you bring value to them as in they're just beginning, they got a budget, they're scraping by. Yeah. But they want to be a photographer. How do you think you can? Dude, um... Um, so uh, I think, I think the hardest part of like starting out, um, is finding something to inspire you. Um, mm-hmm. you know, you, you make a new Instagram, it's, it's like anything you get mm-hmm. in. I just decided today I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be a fan of football, but I have no idea what football is. I don't know anyone re- related to football. So yeah. what do you do? Mm-hmm. Start watching football games. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Start learning people's names, you know, and it's literally the same thing with photography. There's a classic line in photography, and it's just go out and shoot. You have a camera. You want to be a photographer. Nothing is going to happen overnight, especially with photography. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a hard game to, like, get into, and I'm not even in the game yet, dude. Like, mm-hmm. I'm in Hanford. I've shot some senior pictures, shot some formal pictures, you know, but I am so low scale. Um, I, I definitely have way more room to grow and a lot of goals. So, um, yeah, I, I would say 
just go out and shoot. Shoot anything. Um, if you go out and shoot and you start finding that you're shooting more of like flowers, landscapes, houses, things like that, you could be an architectural photographer. And those are really, co really cool because they use lights and shadows and all different sorts of things to like accent different uh, parts of you know, the house or the building or whatever. Or if you want to be a portrait photographer, that's really cool too. Fashion, street. Dude, you can like literally take pictures of cars and be and have like a profession you know mm -hmm. um so to anybody starting out um get your budget man uh i think i started with 600 bucks that's how much my whole pack costs for my camera sd card um a bag everything like that 600 bucks and that'll just get you um uh, a dslr that that you need um and if you Anybody who's watching this who, like, wants to start photography literally, um, look up the difference between a crop sensor DSLR and a full-frame uh, DSLR. Um, you do not need to start on a full-frame DSLR. I feel like that's such a common misconception. A uh, full-frame is just it accepts more information than a crop sensor, mm -hmm. and it's literally, like, a crop sensor <coughs> is a smaller frame than a full-frame. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, buy something that is not super professional because you know you never know if you're gonna like it um mm -hmm. do that uh scroll instagram man follow literally everybody you, you you find follow your friends your mom's friends your mom your mom's mom your dad follow yeah. literally everybody dude the point of all this is to like bring awareness to what you're trying to do um because that's i think the most important part especially in photography is right. Um, social connection, you know, of course, talking to people, mm -hmm. building uh, like a not a fan base, like a, a community, right? You know? mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, uh, and I, not to interrupt you, no, no, but yeah. uh, I like how you said right now, not a fan base, but a community. I feel like yeah. people are just trying to gain fans, trying to gain fans, and right. that's cool and all, but if you just make it the whole goal to gain fans, yeah, it's not really like bringing value, but when you build a community. Of, oh snap like yeah. a, and a, com a community that's like also involved in you right. just as much as you're involved in them and yeah. it's, it brings value to everybody yeah so go yeah, ahead. what were you gonna say yeah no um uh building on that dude yeah i feel like especially around here mm -hmm. throw some shade right now bro <laughs> um around here everybody right. everybody has an agenda you know everybody wants everybody wants it to happen overnight you yeah. know they want to be I picked up a camera, okay, I'm the hottest in Hanford, or I'm the hottest in Visalia, or Fresno, or like whatever. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, that doesn't work. No. It doesn't work. And also, it's it's not cute, man. No. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to be your fan no. because you think that you're better than me. Like, let's mm -hmm. shoot together. Let's go find a model and we'll shoot together and mm -hmm. we can bounce ideas off of each other. So, yeah, definitely follow a community based lifestyle, you know? Um, I feel like anybody person i look at first of all is, is logic i mean logic was a constant grind that yeah. guy worked like two jobs came home cooked up some instrumentals and wrapped over him slept for two hours when did it all again yeah and it was all because he had passion for what he was doing that's another big part of it you know mm -hmm. and he was talking to people and making friends in the game and uh getting his name out there but it wasn't because oh someday i want to be able to be on this huge platform where everybody's looking at me Mm -hmm. And I'm just known as like the best. That's right. not what it's about. Mm -hmm. I feel like anything that you have passion for should be about community, especially when it starts mm -hmm. wanting to bring people into your life. And yeah, yeah, man. Exactly. It, it almost seems like when someone makes something the whole goal, that got loud when that turned off. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so when someone uh, makes it the whole goal to just, oh, um, it's for personal gain. Yeah. That's where they always go wrong and they always fail. Yeah. But when it's to bring value and to gain value, I guess you can say, more to bring value, though, yeah. that's um, that's where it all starts. That's where, I don't know, it's where most people become more successful, I guess you can yeah. say. Well, and also, too, I mean, I feel like even the people that um, make it, um, mm -hmm. when it's just all about them, it just yeah. becomes ugly, becomes yeah. unattractive. Mm -hmm. It's just... Because you know it's all just for this, like almost, almost cloud, I guess. I don't know. It's, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's not. Just ugly. And it was almost sad. It's it actually is sad. Is that the kids that are, you know, just starting off and whatever they want to do, mm -hmm. 
they see that and they're like, oh, okay, that's got to be me now. Right. And uh, I, I got to flex this. I got to flex that. I got to right. flex how many this and that I have. But it's, that's not what it's all about. It's all about you got to love it. You got to uh, bring value as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, man. Well, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> that's all right. We'll go ahead and go into almost the last part. But what was the question I was going to ask? Um <laughs> What's the question? Okay, so let's rewind a little bit yeah. back to when you were talking about how it was in high school. Yeah. There's someone like that right now that may be watching this. Yeah. So go ahead and I guess, what would you say to them in that situation now that you have all the knowledge that you have now and it's almost like a mini Cheney? Listen to this album. What album is that? Give it a nice. John Bellion, The Human Condition. Shout out. Um, that album came in my second um, summer at Alaska. Mm-hmm. I was uh, just scrolling music. Okay, f- first and foremost, music, man. Music. Music. Mm -hmm. Uh, Find a connection with music. Music, I um, so strongly believe that music feeds our soul. If I'm happy, I listen to music. If I'm sad, I listen to music. Mm -hmm. If I'm with my friends, I'm listening to music. It's just, and it's, it's not in the same way that everybody's like, oh, listen to this new music that I found. Like, you know, like I'm hella cool because I know an underground artist. Yeah. Back to the whole community thing. Dude, fuck off. 100%. 100%. Just do well, listen what you like. Yes. Listen God. what you love. Stop what listening to weird shit because you think it's cool. <laughs> Stop. Stop it right now. I don't like it. Um yeah, dude, listen to what you like. Yeah. Yeah, um so first and foremost, find music that you like. Seriously, find a connection with music. I feel like music heals a lot. Time heals a lot, but jeez, man, music heals. Um this album is so important to me. Uh it's like there, there's a song on it called Maybe IDK. No, maybe I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I think, and when I heard that song the first time, you know, I'm listening through, um, I typically just listen to the music and I'm not a big lyrics guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I listened to the album again and I really listened to the song and there's a line in the song that says, um, a basic, the whole premise of the song is posing the question maybe i don't know Mm -hmm. um damn it i'm trying to think of the line i wonder if it's in here no it's not can i look at the lyric on my phone go for it awesome commercial break ads maybe if i get ads by this time yo i'll insert ads (laughs) insert ads yeah dude tell me about um what music you're listening to recently while i'm doing this okay so I go. I listen to music by albums, not by songs. Um, yeah. I thought that's okay. that too. That's the right way. That to too, right it. there. Give me another high five. I like that, man. Nice. I don't listen to the hot single unless it's in the album. Yep. Um, and I it's from start to end, not yeah. shuffle it. Now I gotta start it to end it. Right. Um, my favorite is Tyler the Creator. No matter what, obviously Igor just came out. Vote Igor. Um, Vote Igor. Vote yes. Igor. Um, so I've been bopping that in my Hell car yeah, for a little dude. bit. Um, <laughs> you make my earthquake, man. Oh. Uh, man, that's such a hot song. So good, dude. Okay. Um, Anderson Pack. I love. Ooh, really? Yeah, I love him. Dude. I nice. listen to Malibu a lot. Okay. Um, and I like his new album too, but I think uh, Malibu is definitely one of my favorites. Okay. Um. I've been listening to a lot, not a lot, but some older music like Stevie Wonder and The Temptations, nice. Al Green. For sure. Um, there's a couple more. Whatever, and so you know, I have the Bluetooth in my car, so yeah. like whatever shuffles is usually what I listen to, and it's a lot of. Um, Mac Miller is cliche that sounds right now no, because fuck of that, dude. Mac uh, is 
Mac is a dog. Yeah, he is. Rest in peace. Shout out to him. R.I.P. Mac. Um, but I've been listening to a lot of him as well. Uh, I really like my favorite album of his is uh, Divine Feminine, but really? also Good AM is also very good as well. Okay, Divine Feminine, really? That's your favorite album? By yeah. Him? Not so. no shade, just like really interesting because yeah. I feel like that album got a lot of flack. Really? Yeah. I I, I didn't even know that. Dude, I, I I really enjoy that album. Yeah, it's a good album. Yeah. Uh, the intro's sick. The intro just catches my soul every time. Catches your soul. It catches my soul, dude. <laughs> I love it. Um, All right. Yeah. Go ahead. No. I'm okay. I was just trying to fill time at, at that point. I got the I got the I got the lyrics on deck, bro. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got, I got bars. Spit some right now or what? Bars. No. Okay. I, I, I don't spit. Okay, so um <laughs> John Bellion, the human condition, um maybe IDK. Um the premise of the song is pose the question again maybe i don't know just like in general Mm -hmm. um because i feel like as humans in general you know uh, i'm just gonna put it out there i'm a christian i believe in god there you go um that's who i am that's how i grew up and so i i do believe that uh god is out there and that he's looking out for us and that he loves each and every one of us amen and uh yeah so the two lines that have always stuck in my mind except for five minutes ago um, are, I guess if I knew tomorrow, I wouldn't need faith. And I guess if I never fell, I wouldn't need grace. I guess if I knew his plans, then he wouldn't be God. And I'm seriously getting chills and goosebumps right now. Uh, every time I listen to this song, I don't cry, um, every time, but you know, like I tear up, you know, I feel it. that is so like powerful. And in that moment, when I re-listened to the album, um, it literally changed my life. I was like, maybe I don't know. Mm-hmm. Ma- maybe I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe I'm not going to go to work tomorrow. Maybe I'm going to die in my sleep tonight. Maybe I'm going to get chopped up tonight in this little grinder. Cause I was working at, you know, Alaska. Oh yeah. And it was, and it just created this whole new mindset of, motivation tomorrow's not promised dude yeah yeah. and also fucking if i never fell i i wouldn't need grace right you know Mm -hmm. god's love is immense Mm -hmm. whether you believe it or not man uh it, it is and grace is for real um yeah i i i can't i can't say it any better than than he did so Mm -hmm. If you're going through stuff in high school, if you are um, up and coming on a new hobby or a business idea that you're trying to do, listen to this album. It like and seriously like listen to it not just for the music but also for the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Study what he says. Hear the emotion in his voice. Um, yeah, I really wish I would have had this earlier on. Um, that album is awesome. So, yeah, for anybody in high school, do that. Talk to your fucking parents, man. Wow, that sounds nerd. No, I'm fucking <laughs> get this bitch out of here. <laughs> <laughs> fucking lame ass. I'm serious, okay? For real, talk, dude. Talk to your parents. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say nine times out of ten, uh, most people that I meet aren't being like abused by their parents. Mm-hmm. Um, if that is the case, please have the strength and know that everybody around you is behind you to mm-hmm. do something about it. Yep. Um. But for the sake of, you know, what I'm about to say, let's assume that they're not um, and your parents really love you and they and they care about you, which Mm -hmm. most parents do, um, Mm -hmm. because you're literally their their spawn. Your mom carried you in her womb for nine months. For nine freaking months. Are you kidding me, dude? That's some fucking dedication, dude. Dude. Wow. I would have. No, I wouldn't have carried me for nine months. No. (laughs) Wouldn't have done it. Like this Cheney kid. You can go to Fresno State. It's not worth it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, dude, talk to your parents. If, if you're having problems, they have so much wisdom, so much more life experience than you. Talk to your parents. Uh, and take, take what your friends say with a grain of salt. Advice that your friends give is definitely good. It's always good to have a buddy right there with you. It's good to have brothers that are not your brothers or sisters um, that are not your sisters. But definitely don't 
base your life decisions off of, you know, what somebody your age is telling you to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Take a minute, breathe, step back from the situation, talk to somebody else who knows, who's been through that same sort of thing. And um, just literally one of the best people to do that with is your parents. I mean, they're the closest to you. They love you the most. Mm -hmm. And whether you want to disappoint them or not, they're always going to have your best or your best interest in mind. For sure. Those are... Three things. That was good stuff, man. John Bellion, find your brothers and sisters. Amen. Talk to your fucking parents, bro. Amen. All right, Chaney, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to talk about anything that you have planned for the future that you want to plug. Sure. Um, so I'll just give you these, I don't know, minute or so, a couple minutes, few minutes, 10 hours, if you want it to be that long. 10 hours. You can speak for however long. The, the stage is yours now. Wow. Yeah. I feel so... Wow. Go for it, man. Okay. Um, I missed a couple of things that I wanted to talk about, so I'm just going to talk about them. Go first. for it, man. Um, I told you earlier, my photography is highly influenced by music, specifically mm-hmm. rap. I love hip-hop. I love rap. Uh, Travis there. Scott, Birds in the Trap, <clears throat> classic. Mm-hmm. This is not hip-hop, but it's another beautiful album, The Lumineers, Cleopatra. That's a big guy. And... Um, my second favorite album of all time, John Bellion being the first, Logic, The Incredible True that Story. Is, okay. I'll pause you right there. Yeah. I love that. That's my favorite album of his. Okay. And I feel like all my buddies don't like it as much as me. I don't understand how you don't like that album. I don't understand either. I'm like, did you listen to it? Cause <laughs> did you listen? Because, oh my gosh. Yeah, dude. Uh, the Incredible True Story is amazing. The production that went into it his oh dude dude it was very good so good shout out to logic man jesus shout out logic uh logic, logic. <laughs> long dick <laughs> logic man yes Sorry. I also this is one thing that i started out doing before i even had a dslr mm-hmm. polaroids sick everybody loves these dude, they're you awesome. buy a little polaroid camera uh, these little prints come out. Look super retro. They're really cool. White girls love them. Shouts to white girls. We all know you're out there. If it ain't snowing, we ain't going. <laughs> so yeah, um, I would definitely uh, if you're if you're interested in photography and you like that sort of retro look, desaturated, warm, um, very flashy, kind of like you know, just kick it back, kick it back a notch. Yeah. Buy a fucking Polaroid, man. A um, hundred bucks, pack the film, or twelve for twenty shots. It's a good time. Uh, I have six hundred in here. Super fun. I have another six hundred, almost, in another book, and they're just a great thing to collect. And and then the cool part is, you take them with somebody, and then you show them to them a year later, and they're like, "Whoa, I forgot about that." That's awesome. Um, yeah. Also, I would also like to like seriously. Talk about the fact that you do not have to start out on a professional camera if you want to start out with mm-hmm. photography. This lens was sixteen hundred dollars, and this uh, camera body is three thousand five hundred dollars, brand new. Um, I did not pay that much. Uh, I I bought them used. Chaney, but Cheney's big baller over here. I had been saving for years, <laughs> painstaking <laughs> years. Okay, uh, yeah. So you definitely don't have to start with spending a couple racks on gear um you know go buy a couple hundred dollars uh worth of stuff and, and and get shooting that's that's the big point is shoot um besides that coming up in the future i'm looking to design my first zine um a zine is like you know short for magazine z-i-z-e um and it's basically just a, a photo book um mm-hmm. uh i'd really like to i'm kind of finally settling settling into my true style Colors that I like, perspective, the way that I compose my um, contrast levels and shadows and all that sorts of stuff. Um, I had, when I met um, Jake Tovar uh, last week, I got to meet another one of his friends who is a videographer. Um, Brian, I don't know his last name, but on Instagram, he is Bayanez, B-A-Y-A-N-E-Z. Shout out. Shout to the boy. He's an awesome guy. And his girlfriend, too. She's awesome. Shout out. Um... Yeah, so I I got to talk to him, and he, so eventually they asked me, you know, like, what's your Instagram, can I check it out? So they did, 
and I got probably the coolest compliment on photography I, I've, I've ever had, which was, and it was literally so simple. He just said, cool color palette, man, which for a photographer is like, holy shit, you see my color palette, you know, like, mm-hmm. and a color palette is basically like all the colors that I typically use. So like in Lightroom, you have your photo, there's a bunch of like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, it's right there. It's right there, Dustin. My photo is right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I mean, that's from your point. <laughs> so basically, uh, you have your photo. Podcast over. Got, yeah, podcast. Yeah, we're pros out here, boys. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh my god. Dude. I've so done this before. I've done it so many times. <laughs> I'm so good at this, man. I'm trying to like figure out what I was trying to say. Color palette. <laughs> Color palette, bro. All right, so picture a lot of stuff right here where you can adjust all sorts of things. Yeah, right, right there. Just imagine it's right there, okay? And one of the sections is it lays out red, orange, yellow, green, blue, pink, and magenta. I believe those are all the colors, I believe. Um, and within each color, you can adjust the hue which means that anything that is identified as orange in the picture that the computer says, okay, this is orange, you can change it all the way from red to like a green color. Um, And then you can adjust the saturation, which is of course, you know, like the the fullness of the color. So Mm -hmm. if I desaturate it all the way, it's probably gonna be gray. If I saturate it all the way, you're really gonna be able to tell that it's orange. Yeah. Um, The other thing is uh, brightness, which basically is just, if I bump it up, the color in that picture is gonna be really bright. Um, So, a color palette is specific settings within each picture that kind of follow a pattern in your pictures on your Instagram feed. So for somebody to be able to look at my Instagram feed and and notice a um, a trend in like the colors that I use constantly in my pictures, or the way that I you know like manipulate the colors in my pictures mm-hmm. was a huge compliment because for me it's like. I'm always trying to establish my color palette and my style. And when he said that, I was like, that's awesome. That's so, sick, man. a photo book probably coming soon. Um, definitely going to work on that. And uh, always Yosemite trips, bro. Always, always. Yosemite trips. Uh, Glacier Point boys, you know, we're always at Glacier Point. Oh, also, anybody in high school, if you have a driver's license or if you don't find somebody that have, has a driver's license, mm-hmm. get your parents' permission. Um, or fuck that, you know, don't get your parents We're permission. We're Disney out here sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you get your parents' permission. Sometimes. Make sure you get your parents' permission before you sign up for the sweepstakes. <laughs> um, yes. So fuck it, whether you have your parents' permission or not, go to Glacier Point for a sunrise. It takes three hours from Hanford to get to Glacier Point. Mm. Leave at two in the morning. Um, or go stay the night, sleep in your car, wake up, walk to Glacier Point. It's a five-minute walk. It's not even a trail. And watch the sun come over Half Dome. That will also change your life. Four things right there. Um, I will always be in Yosemite taking pictures. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it, man. Come, that's coming up. That's sick, man. So big thing is photo book. Big thing coming up. Big things, photo man. Look out. This guy's always up to big things, man. I'm, I'm trying, man. That's right, man. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah. Shout out to Chase, of course, in the background. Boy. He's been my camera guy, audio guy, sort of. He just kind of came so everything can look right. And so far, he hasn't said anything, so I guess everything looks right. So shout out to you for just sticking up with this. We also look fly as fuck. We look, oh my God. On point, this kid back here is just in, man. I hope that's in frame. I love this outfit. Also, um, yeah. fucking kicks. There you go. I just like to say. Turbo green. Okay. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching, listening. Check us out on Instagram. Want to plug your Instagrams real quick? Y-N-G-H-M-B-L, Young and Humble. Um, that is my photography account. If you're going to follow either of these two, follow that fucking one. Share it. Talk to your friends about it. Of course. Comment, dude. DM me, tell me what you think, please. Mm. Uh, let's be friends. I'm always looking for people to shoot with, guys or girls. Uh, and then my other Instagram is Cheney Ross. That's my that's my uh, personal C H A N E Y R O S S. Hit me up on there too, man. Love making friends. <laughs> <laughs>
Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for watching.